My dear viewers, thank you for understanding and for your incredible patience. If you thought one can't be any later, well, look at what I have achieved. I'm over four months late to review this CPU or rather APU and I'm now here annoying you guys with this review. Now I don't want to go into details on how and why there's been such an enormous delay on my part. So today we are once again taking a look at an AMD Picasso processor, so it's one of those APUs, basically CPUs with an integrated graphics unit by AMD. Today's processor goes by the name of Ryzen 5 3400G, it is equipped with the so-called Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics and at the time of this video costs about 140 to 150 US dollars. While I don't know what you guys are mainly interested in, I for one am really curious about how big of a performance difference there actually is between today's Ryzen 5 3400G and the cheaper Ryzen 3 3200G. While today's 3400G is a quad-core 2, it also comes with SMT, therefore 8 threads to work with. And on top of that it also comes with slightly better integrated graphics as opposed to the 3200G. How much more performance does that actually make up for and is there even much of a difference noticeable? That's what we'll be looking at in today's video even though you most likely already know about it all, since all the info has been out for months after all. And of course I want to talk about one specific topic, is gaming at 1080p possible with this APU? After all, with the 3200G the results didn't look too good, you know? So yeah, we'll see about that. Other than with the Ryzen 3 3200G, which comes with the fairly small Wraith Stealth stock cooler, this Ryzen 5 3400G comes with the more powerful Wraith Spire, and that cooler does a pretty good job at keeping this APU cool while also remaining quiet in operation. As always with these APU reviews, I'll do two kinds of test runs, the first one being a more theoretical one in which I basically test the CPU part alone in combination with a quite powerful dedicated graphics card. Following that I'll be testing the bare processor as it is with its own integrated graphics. For the CPU only test parkour I am as always using my trusty all-in-one liquid cooler by Deepcool, the Castle 240EX, but of course such a cooler is way too overkill for a processor of this small caliber. But I'm continuing this trend by doing the same with my motherboard choice, because I'm installing the 3400G onto the ASRock X570 Tai Chi, a board costing more or less twice as much as today's 3400G. But since I don't have an unlimited choice of boards, I'm going with what I have. Someone that seriously wants to build a Picasso based system should definitely go for motherboards with chipsets such as A320, B350, B450 or maybe even B450 successor whenever and if it releases. And while I dislike repeating myself in my videos, I feel the urge to let you guys know once again that with these AMD APUs, we aren't talking of the new Zen 2 series or architecture. AMD confusingly goes for the same 3000 series naming scheme on their APUs, while in reality the technology behind those is Zen Plus, second gen Ryzen, which released in 2018. So this clearly is 2018 tech. That's how AMD is doing it. Their APUs have always been one generation behind more or less. So those that had hopes to see Navi graphics on here will be disappointed. This is still Vega based. Compared to the 3200G, the iGPU of the 3400G no longer comes with just 8 compute units, but rather 11. Wow, what an increase. Well, but maybe it's one that shouldn't be underestimated. But now let's quickly talk about the clock speeds. I believe I should go for a more realistic way of showcasing those. So it's the APU on its own doing its thing, no help from a dedicated graphics card or a more powerful CPU cooler. In the multicore test I'm reading out 4073 MHz at max, 4046 MHz being the average. With just a single core put to work, we are looking at 4.129 GHz in my test. Then there's the GPU clock remaining. That one is at a very stable 1400 MHz. Now once I get some help from the GTX 1080 Ti in the game Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the CPU clocks in at 4050 to 4075 MHz. So not bad, but a simple not bad is not enough, which is why I'm doing 
two kinds of tests, as mentioned before. At first, I'll be testing the CPU part alone combined with a GTX 1080 Ti, and following that, we'll be looking at the bare performance AMD delivers out of the box with this APU and its integrated graphics unit. Now, let's not waste any more of your precious time. Here are the results. All right, so here should perhaps proceed in a somewhat structured way so that I do not express myself wrongly and confuse one or the other of you watching. I'd say let's start with raw CPU performance. Compared to the 3200G, the 3400G's four additional threads, thanks to SMT, allow for a significant boost when it comes to multi-core applications. While one cannot speak of truly remarkable results here in any way, at a price of roughly $140, the performance in productivity aspects is pretty respectable actually. Even in games, the 8 threads as well as higher clocks are noticeable and lead to improvements over the 3200G. Depending on the game title, we are easily looking at like 20 FPS more with the 3400G. In some instances, even a bigger improvement than that, which however also greatly depends on the graphics card used. With this type of test, I just wanted to show you how well or how bad the CPU part handles everything on its own when pairing it with a dedicated graphics card. And it of course makes sense going for an overkill GPU for such a test to eliminate bottlenecks as best as possible. 
but in all honesty, as I've already told you guys in my 3200G video, no one would or at least shouldn't pair such an APU with a graphics card costing $400 to $600. This $140 processor will definitely be the system's bottleneck, it's the weakest link in the chain. And that can partially already be seen in my tests. As you saw yourselves, while the average frame rate doesn't even look too bad in most cases, what matters a lot for a good smooth and stutter-free gaming experience are minimum values the 1% lows. Those that have paid close attention to the results may have noticed I did end up with some weird gaming results sometimes. For instance, the results in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, on average the 3200G as opposed to the 3400G runs with a slightly lower frame rate in that game, but when it comes to those 1% lows, the cheaper, usually less powerful 3200G rips the 3400G apart in that specific game. And yeah, obviously I double, no, triple checked my results and they are indeed correct. I always ended up with the same result, even after restarting the system and so on. So I was suspecting it had something to do with SMT and I was right. The 3200G has no SMT, the 3400G does however. Once I disable SMT on the 3400G, I end up with close to identical 1% lows I got with the 3200G. Quite interesting how SMT can in some game titles negatively affect performance. The temperatures are of absolutely no concern whatsoever. It's all fine. The power consumption on the other hand isn't too impressive though. I mean the power draw is not bad, but it also can't be considered too good to be honest. Intel or AMD with their newer Zen 2 7 nanometer CPUs for instance compared to the offered performance are much more power efficient. But let's leave this theoretical test behind. AP probably aren't necessarily meant to be paired with dedicated graphics cards anyway. The Ryzen 3 3200G unfortunately didn't really manage to impress us with its integrated Vega graphics at a screen resolution of 1080p. So how is that looking with today's Ryzen 5 3400G? Well, very, very similar, it turns out. For real, the results happen to be very close to each other, so we, in fact, could ask ourselves whether or not the price premium really is worth it here if all you have in mind is gaming with this thing. At a screen resolution of 720p, even though it's horribly outdated by today's standards, we do actually get some decent frame rates out of the APU. We might have some reserves left to up the resolution to 900p. But one thing still needs to be kept in mind, the graphic settings pretty much were at their lowest. You hardly can go any lower with the settings than I went. So obviously at Full HD 1080p all you can expect is even lower FPS. You have to consider yourself lucky if you manage to hover between the 40 to 50 FPS mark. To some that's perfectly playable however. But sure, I was testing with AAA games since that's my standardized test parkour. If you plan on playing less demanding titles such as CSGO and the likes, a 3400G or even 3200G should be sufficient in most games, even at 1080p. After all, we can simply expect great graphics fidelity at 60fps from a CPU plus iGPU combo at a price of $140, at least not yet in 2019. Other than that, this time around the power draw seems somewhat okay to me for such a solution. It's far from ideal, but can I really complain here? No, I don't think so. Nevertheless, I feel the 3400G priced at $140 doesn't really bring that much more to the table performance-wise compared to the 3200G that comes in at $90 to $100. Sure, more multi-core performance, but those that simply had in mind to build a cheap, new gaming rig might end up being a bit disappointed. The integrated graphics hardly is any more powerful than the one found on the 3200G, so that doesn't make too much of a difference either. At the end of the day, it depends on how and what you plan to use the APU for. With such a product, there are several possible target audiences. Some simply want a game cheap, others want to build themselves a good HTPC and another part will just use this thing as an office PC. So I can't emphasize enough it comes down to the use case. Even though I gotta say I find the 3200G to be a much more attractive deal price performance wise. Which is why I can recommend picking up the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G for specific use cases but it only gets my silver award. With that being said, thanks for watching, the video has been long enough.